so guys i am a verified educator on an online learning platform called on academy right where i am making courses for gate examination both in hindi and english right so you can download the on academy learning app search my name over there act and follow me on that particular platform for awesome videos on the gate chemistry examination so very good afternoon to all of you now i just want to clear all the doubts regarding this question right a lot of students are asking me a lot i had a lot of doubts regarding this question that what will be the correct answer so the correct answer is six okay but many of you are saying the reference giving me a reference of this particular compound over here right this one this compound that is given in clayton in the second edition on page number 271 right on 271 this compound is given and over there the two hydrogens over here, the two hydrogens present on this carbon and on this carbon have the same chemical shift, right? It is given in Clayton, right? Now, this was the compound over here. This was the compound given in the question and this is the chem draw structure along with the, uh, the NR, proton NMR prediction of that, right? And over here, you can see clearly that one of the hydrogens is at 4.05 and the other, other is at 3.95. That is because these two hydrogens are diastereotopic in nature. And diastereotopic protons never give the same chemical shift. They will always give you the different chemical shift. Enantiotopic protons give you the same chemical shift, right? So now, uh, why are the diastereotopic? I made a video earlier, but I think many of you misinterpreted what I wanted to tell. Now, what I wanted to say was that if you want to see whether the protons are enantiotopic or diastereotopic, let's say we have two hydrogens over here, right? We have two hydrogens over here. I'll replace the second hydrogen by any other element let's say any other element let's say that element is x now if i replace it with by with it uh, by some other element x now if you see this becomes a chiral center this carbon over here i'll star mark it this becomes a chiral center so now we have one chiral center but if we have one chiral center then the protons are definitely going to be enantiotopic because we'll have enantiomers but in this particular case just by substituting one hydrogen even this center over here, which was earlier not chiral, this center over here also becomes chiral in nature. Because this oxygen will be given priority number one now. And this oxygen will be given priority number two. So this center also becomes chiral. So now there are two chiral centers that have been generated just by substituting one of the hydrogens. So that means this hydrogen over here, which are substituted by X, and this one over here, these two hydrogens are diastereotopic in nature. And because they are diastereotopic in nature, they will have different chemical shifts, right? So for the similar compound that many are claiming is given in Clayton on page number 271, and indeed it is given, and all the four protons have the same chemical shift, that is these two CH2 protons have the same chemical shift, it is indeed given in Clayton. But if you again take the uh, predict, uh, if you take the chem draw structure of that, again you can see that they, are, they have two different chemical shifts, that is 3.85 and 3.75. So conceptually, clearing is wrong over here. These four protons will not have the same chemical shift. Two protons will have different chemical shift, and two protons will have different chemical shift because they are diastereotopic in nature. But again, Clayton is a very good reference book. So in case the answer is given as six, you might uh, you know give the reference of Clayton and try and predict the answer as 5 Th that you can do you can you can send out a representation if you want but yes according to me conceptually it is given incorrectly in clearly and this is the first of a kind of a wrong uh, explanation that is given in Clayton, right now uh, you might be thinking okay Clayton is a better reference than chem draw right so i have a uh, i have this research paper over here so this is the compound 2 methyl 2 phenyl 1 3 di oxalane and this is the NMR predicted, not predicted, sorry, this is the actual NMR, the experimental NMR of this compound. And if you see, uh, this hydrogen is one, this will show one NMR, right? These two hydrogens, this one and this one will have one chemical shift. These will, these will give one signal, then these two hydrogens will give one signal, right? So we have three signals over here. Then the methyl hydrogens will show one signal, so we have four signals over here. Now, according to you, these four should show the same chemical signal, and we should have five signals, right? But they show different chemical signals as it is given in the experiment. So 1.66 three hydrogens singlet. So this corresponds to the methyl. Then we have 3.73 to 3.83 two hydrogens that is corresponding to CH2O. So it is talking about one of the hydrogens over here and one of the hydrogens over here, right? Then we have another signal 3.99 to 4.09 again 2H multiplied. So now it is talking about these two hydrogens. So you can see these two hydrogens have different chemical shift. These four hydrogens do not have the same signal, they have two different signals. 
One is showing from 3.73 to 3.83 and the other from 3.99 to 4.09, right? Then we have 7.29, this corresponds to the aromatic proton 1H. 1H means this proton over here. Then we have another one at uh, two hydrogens triplet. So it could be, um, it could be basically your, uh, these uh, 7.35, right? So 7.35 will correspond to these hydrogens. And then we have at 7.48 doublet, which corresponds to these hydrogens, right? So these are six signals. You can see one signal, two signal, three signals, so three aromatic signals. Then we have two signals over here. We have three signals in the aliphatic region. So total is six signals. That proves the point that the answer, the correct answer is definitely going to be six. But like many of you have written the five as the answer. So you can give the representation if the answer comes out as six, that the answer should be five. But obviously we have plenty of evidence that the answer is going to be six, right? So um, that's it. And I hope now the concept is clear. Uh, whatever doubts you were having, I don't think now there's anything to debate about. This is the experimental data and nothing can go beyond the experimental data, right? So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.